So we have Matthias Leibach from Fortumo. And Fortumo is really doing something interesting. They help micropayments possible for those people who do not have a credit card and they use the prepaid and the postpaid billing to actually charge you for whatever you've done. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, you know, understand what do you mean by micropayments? What's, what's the extent of a micropayment, mm -hmm. least, especially in India, that you're now in India? So yeah, in uh, the Indian market, the transaction sizes we process are anywhere between 10 and 100 rupees. Uh, the transaction amount is quite small, uh, but what we've discovered, we've been uh, live in India now for about a year with uh, Airtel, Vodafone and IDEA. And what we've discovered is that users are willing to make payments, but they're willing to make the payments in a very small, uh, small amount. So since there's a lot of prepaid users in India who uh, uh, charge very small amounts of money to their uh, SIM card, it means that if a merchant wants to process payments, uh, they need to uh, scale down very much on, on their payments. At this particular point in time, you uh, specialize in digital content or selling digital content, right? Does, does your platform allow people to buy something offline? And if so, what all? Mm -hmm. So our core customers are, as you said, digital content merchants. So whether it's web services, uh, music video streaming, ebooks, uh, games, applications. Uh, carrier billing so far hasn't found a big use case in physical goods and the main reason for this is uh, payouts. So with credit cards you usually get around, uh, the credit card processors take something like 2 to 3 percent. Uh, depending on the market uh, with carrier billing uh, the carriers take anywhere between 20 to 60 percent. So uh, for in most cases it's uh, unfeasible to sell physical goods. However, we are looking into uh, pilot projects in some uh, smaller markets uh, right now and uh, basically setting up uh, small test shops to see, if, for example, we can sell plush toys and things like that uh, through physical goods. So kind of a short answer is that, yes, it's possible, but uh, the market isn't uh, there yet in terms of the commercial terms uh, set forth by the uh, mobile operators. Right. So it's, it's quite a sweet spot you're at, uh, considering the fact that there are a lot of people in India who don't have credit cards because of a lot, lot of the regulations that are, that are part of it. And on the other side, you ha are having all the liberty to move to both the prepaid and the postpaid uh, you know, users. Now could you just give me a split us on how many of these are actually prepaid, how many prepaid consumers versus how many postpaid consumers? do you have on your network, especially from India? Mm -hmm. So from our perspective, it doesn't matter actually if the user is prepaid or postpaid because we are able to process the payment anyway. So how the system is set up is that if the user clicks the buy button in the app or on the web, uh, our backend solution communicates with the mobile operator. We ask if the, if the user has money to pay uh, and if they don't, they, then they cannot make the payment. So in the case of prepaid cards, uh, if they have money on the balance, we deduct it. If they don't, then they can't pay. Uh, in case of postpaid, then uh, we make, uh, complete the transaction and they pay at the end of the month on their phone bill. So from our perspective, if we're live with an operator and the uh, user, end user of the operator has the money on their account, then we are able to process the transaction no matter what. All right, so you know, considering the fact that India is our third largest internet population countries in the world. How are the penetration right here, as opposed to a lot, lot of other countries, mm -hmm. it's just about 19%. Do you think that is a major deterrent in any kind of an, uh, you know, in, in any kind of way in your business? Mm -hmm. Or is it... I think it's only a deterrent if the uh, merchant or developer is looking at the percentage of penetration. Uh, if you're looking at the volume of people who have smartphones, I believe there was data on the stage that there's right now 160 million smartphones in India. So that's, for example, more than there are people living in Germany or UK. So I think India is already a bigger market than, than those countries. It will soon catch up with US as well. And considering that there's over 1 billion people here, 
uh, I think it's it's definitely a very high potential and from the merchant perspective if they're interested in uh, emerging markets then India is definitely one of the most important markets to look to look at so is there any kind of a transaction that's happening across borders not not only in terms of just content but let's say you have been able to bring in players from outside to actually have buyers in India. Is there some kind of case study of that sort? Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of local merchants use us, but I think in India most of our revenue actually comes from uh, uh, our existing merchants in North America, Europe, uh, and also there has been uh, extremely high interest from uh, Chinese app and game developers towards the Indian market. So I think uh, because the Chinese uh, app ecosystem is itself is very much saturated uh, and dominated by Android, uh, which is kind of the Android dominates also here, then I think uh, th the Chinese merchants are looking uh, to expand their business uh, outside. So yeah, a lot of our business actually in India is, uh, is done by, by the Chinese merchants who are, who are kind of providing their apps and app stores here. That's interesting. I, I wish I wish the table turns. Uh, the well, we we also hope because uh, for us, seeing the local ecosystem grow here is very much important. So uh, the more you know, games, uh, apps, and, and web services get launched, the better the better for us as well. Do you see any kind of regulatory terms or conditions that put a barrier in your growth in India? Mm -hmm. So usually the market is regulated when something becomes uh, problematic. So for example, when we look at credit cards, there's a, a very high rate of chargebacks. There's a very high rate of uh, fraud. Uh, since we're processing uh, microtransactions, then the amount of fraud is pretty much non-existent. Uh, the amount of uh, chargebacks is very small. Uh, and so I think this market uh, doesn't need that much regulation when compared to credit cards, simply because the potential impact on consumers, for example, you know, if somebody takes, even if it's the case that your phone is stolen and somebody makes a payment inside the game and takes the 100 rupees, then it doesn't have as big of an impact as, uh, as with credit cards. There's definitely uh, more kind of open questions and, and legislation that need, needs to be cleared up in the sale of physical goods because uh, that's a completely different market and you have a completely different set of issues but since it's too early for kind of the physical goods then I think on the digital content part uh, there's there's not much uh, legal roadblocks uh, currently currently that, that are kind of kind of stopping us so considering that you are you know really big on the payment sec section this one sector that probably is going to be pose is going to be posing a lot of competition for you which is the mobile wallet mm -hmm. do you see that being a very do you see it's um, becoming a very big challenge to you mm -hmm. to penetrate the market so the issue with mobile wallets is that the user needs to sign up to make a payment. Uh, if we're talking about you know, first time payments on Google Play or Apple App Store or wherever, you always need to fill in the information, put in your credit card number, put in your address, fill in the security code and so on. So you need to fill out about 10 different uh, you know, information forms. What uh, the impact of this is, is that um, it takes a lot of time to complete the payment compared to carrier billing and a lot of users drop off in the payment process. So uh, in terms of conversion, credit cards are usually at least uh, 10 times lower in conversion than carrier billing and it's perfectly fine to use credit cards if you're selling things like, you know, uh, you're buying a TV online, you're buying shoes, some expensive items that you're sure you want to get. Uh, if we're talking about uh, very low amount purchases, if you're buying movie tickets or uh, ordering flowers, uh, paying inside a game, uh, renting a movie online, then uh, the conversion rate very much matters. So if it's an impulse purchase, the user wants to buy it now, he doesn't want to fill out 10, uh, 10 you know, questions about uh, himself and his credit card data. So, so in this sense, uh, mobile wallets will definitely work for uh, very big merchants. So, for example, you know, if you have a huge coffee shop uh, retail uh, or um, 
uh, or things like that, then it will work because they have a very big brand. If we're talking about small individual merchants uh, and especially impulse purchases, then wallets are kind of problematic because of the, uh, the conversion rates. And there's really no way for, for the wallets to, to solve this problem. They will always have to ask for the information beforehand. And that's something that we don't have to do with carrier billing. Sure, but you can always save a credit card or a debit card on a wallet and the wallet can be recharged or probably you can, you can put a lot of charge on the, on the wallet mm -hmm. and still you know, be able yeah, to... Yeah, that's true. Uh, but again, uh, if we're talking about the first time payment, then uh, if it's... The user will give up at some point. If it's too annoying, if kind of the thing that he wants isn't something that he really badly wants to buy, like a TV online. So if you still have to fill out those 10 forms, the user will be giving up and you will not be receiving, uh, receiving the money that you would have maybe otherwise gotten. Thank you.